Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jace Hargis, and we're here for the third module of this video series. And this one will be on assessment, formative assessment, and some ideas of rubrics. I really like this representation. Many of you have probably seen this. This is a Wordle at wordle.net. And this basically shows the diagram of frequency of terms. So the larger the term, the more frequent it's talked about. This is one that I pulled from one of the um, presentations that I've done on assessment and measurement. So it's nice to see the big assessment rubric, student-centered learning, all those terms that we um, hopefully we would see. Now this next quick diagram, I, I challenge you to take a look at this and go ahead and read this to yourself. You can read it aloud or, or uh, to yourself. And, and what do you read? How does that, uh, what is the assessment? Assessment is, some people may see assessment as good, some people may look closer and see that assessment is evil. Obviously I did this for us to think broadly about assessment. Assessment is neither good or evil. Assessment generally is. Now, very briefly, I'll share with you the specific definitions of assessment. This always helps put things into context. So the idea of assessment is, is simply, it's a vehicle for gathering some sort of information about the learner and their behavior. So it's an instrument. It could be many things, but it is an instrument. And the better the, the instrument is, the better the information is that it can gather. Now, in tandem with this, we typically use terms like assessment, measurement, and evaluation in that order. Measurement is obviously this assignment of points based on some sort of marks or criteria. And then evaluation is going to be a process of making a judgment on those particular marks to determine a level of understanding. So when they're done in that order, and they're done very well in the beginning, that obviously the evaluation in the end turns out to be more accurate. The American Association of Higher Education has come out with a list of nine principles of good practice for assessing. I encourage you to glance at those. Most of those are, are pretty straightforward, but they're good reminders about us when we're developing and thinking about assessment. So one thing you want to think about with assessment is when students are able to really understand something, they exhibit a few major characteristics. First of all, they're able to explain and connect and synthesize much of the conceptual framework. Secondly, they're able to show its meaning. Third, actually, they're able to apply it to different situations, generalize that, extrapolate that information. They're able to question their assumptions, the assumptions of the theory, the assumptions of the model. They can also see it as the author sees it. And finally, and this is key, is that they're able to identify the misconceptions, the misperceptions about that particular concept. These are very high level questions, but when they can do some of those, they understand the material. So therefore, that's where assessment comes into play. How can we assess them accurately? Now, we mentioned two broad types of assessment. The assessment term we know is this instrument, but there's two major ways. There is summative, which would be this whole idea of high stakes, finale type, and then there's formative, which is more of a, a real time uh, opportunity for you to make some remediation if necessary. So what is formative assessment? Formative assessment should be part of the actual instruction and it should be provided at a time that you can adjust your teaching. Many students think that all assessment is about them. Formative is actually much more about the instruction. Obviously the better instruction, the better feedback loops, the better teaching and learning will occur. So formative instruction is bi-directional. It's going to be this feedback mechanism that takes place. Now many times we offer up and we realize that for our students to really understand our content, they have to do some things that are more of a challenge to measure, more subjectively. Items such as classroom communication, presentations, writing skills, uh, even some laboratory skills, performance-based skills, classroom participation. These are all things that sometimes need a different mechanism. This is where the idea of a rubric comes into play. Now, most of us have probably heard the term rubric. It's simply a, a criteria of expectations or guidelines. The key there is that it should be transparent. It should be a communication bridge between the faculty member and the student. The student should receive this upfront. They should be able to use this as a, a guide for their, to determine their own success and even do some self-assessment self before it's actually handed in. I realize that was a lot for assessment in a very little, little time. And assessment's one of those things where you just got to really kind of get in there and grapple with, ask a lot of questions, and try some things. Hopefully you will do just that. Before you go, I'd like you to please, again, jot down a one-sentence summary. Secondarily, just go ahead and put one idea that you might use in your classroom. 
And then finally, that one word, that word that you feel right now after watching this module. And I'd like to thank you again. I'm Jace Hargis. I hope to see you on the next module.